Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Enjoy Biochemistry. I am Dr. Trupti and in this video we are going to study about tryptophan metabolism. Tryptophan is the first amino acid to be identified as essential amino acids and it contains indole ring. It is alpha amino beta indole propionic acid and it is the example of aromatic amino acid and other two aromatic amino acids are phenylalanine and tyrosine. Tryptophan is very important and on metabolism it leads to formation of alanine as well as fats. That's why it is referred as both glucogenic as well as ketogenic. Various biologically important substances are formed or derived from tryptophan like coenzymes of niacin, NAD+, NADP+, these are synthesized from tryptophan. Formyl group is also synthesized which is useful in one carbon metabolism. Serotonin, melatonin, these are synthesized from the tryptophan and 5-hydroxy indole acetic acid and indican, these are the exc excretory products of metabolism of tryptophan. Tryptophan metabolism has many branching points, but for the sake of convenience, it can be studied uh, with the help of two major pathways. The first pathway is called as kynurenine pathway or nicotinic acid pathway. And second pathway is serotonin pathway, which leads to synthesis of both serotonin as well as melatonin. So this kynurenine pathway, it is the major pathway of uh, oxidation of tryptophan to acetyl-CoA. And this pathway is responsible for synthesis of coenzymes of niacin that is NAD plus and NADP plus. And that's why it is also called as nicotinic acid pathway. Serotonin pathway, it occurs in brain, mast cells, platelets, gastro, gastrointestinal cells, mucosa. And 1% of the tryptophan is converted to serotonin by this serotonin pathway. So the first pathway is kynurenin or nicotinate pathway. In this pathway, oxidation of tryptophan occurs to acetyl-CoA. In the first step of this kynurenin uh, pathway, the tryptophan, the ring of tryptophan, that is the indole ring is broken down by this tryptophan pyrolase, which is also tryptophan dioxygenase enzyme. And it is ion containing enzyme, which breaks the aromatic ring or indole ring to form N-formyl kynurenin from tryptophan. So this is the first step of kynurenin pathway, formation of N-formyl kynurenin. This tryptophan pyrolase, it is activated by two hormones, cortisol and glucagon in the liver. Next step is catalyzed by kynurenin formamidase. In this reaction, kynurenin is formed from N-formyl kynurenin and during this reaction, Tetrahydrofolate is converted to formyl tetrahydrofolate which contributes to one carbon pool. In the next reaction which is catalyzed by kynurenin hydroxylase and it also requires NADPH, kynurenin is converted to 3-hydroxykynurenin. Then this 3-hydroxykynurenin it, it is catalyzed by the enzyme kynureninase. This kynureninase is a PLP that is pyridoxal phosphate dependent enzyme and in this process alanine is synthesized and that's why tryptophan is called as glucogenic amino acid and 3-hydroxykynurenin is converted to 3-hydroxyanthranilate and then if there is deficiency of this pyridoxal phosphate then this 3-hydroxykynurenin can be channeled to a different pathway that is uh, synthesis of xanthurenate from 3-hydroxykynurenin uh, which can be further excreted in the urine that's why in vitamin D uh, vitamin B6 deficiency there is excretion of xanthurenate in the urine and finally through the series of reaction this 3-hydroxyanthranilate is converted to acetyl-CoA and that's why the tryptophan is called as ketogenic amino acid. Now let's see how niacin is synthesized from this tryptophan. So when this 3-hydroxyanthranilate is formed during oxidation of tryptophan, most of this is diverted to formation of acetyl-CoA. But about 3% is diverted to formation of quinolinate. And this quinolinate is further utilized for synthesis of niacin. That is with the help of uh, PRPP, that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate and 
there will be synthesis of uh, niacin coenzymes like NAD plus, NAD P plus. Uh, it, due, from this tryptophan, we don't uh, get uh, niacin directly. We get niacin in the form of NAD plus and NADP plus. And half of the body's requirement of uh, niacin is provided by this tryptophan, and half of the requirement we should uh, get it from. We get it from the diet. And 60 milligram of uh, tryptophan is required to synthesize one milligram of niacin. Now let's understand the biochemical basis of why vitamin B6 deficiency leads to xanthorenic aciduria as well as niacin deficiency that is pellagra. So this kinureninase enzyme, it, it is dependent on this PLP that is pyridoxal phosphate and it is derived from vitamin B6. And this coenzyme is required for formation of this 3-hydroxyanthranilate from 3-hydroxykinureanin. So if there is vitamin B6 deficiency, then this kinureninase will not be active. And that's why this 3-hydroxykinureanin will be channeled to formation of xanthurinate, which is further excreted in the urine. And that's why in the vitamin B6 deficiency, there will be excretion of xanthurinate in the urine, which is called as xanthurinic aciduria. Along with that, there will be niacin deficiency because for the formation of niacin, this hydroxykinureanin has to be converted into 3-hydroxyanthrinylate which is further utilized for the synthesis of this niacin. But if there is vitamin B6 deficiency, then there will be no formation of this 3-hydroxyanthrinylate and no formation of NAD plus and NADP plus. And that's why vitamin B6 deficiency leads to both xanthurenic aciduria as well as niacin deficiency and Patient presents with pellagra-like symptoms of dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia. In addition to that, the anti-tubercular drug isoniazide, it also uh, leads to xanthurinic aciduria and niacin deficiency. Why? Because this isoniazide, it precipitates vitamin B6 deficiency. Because it inhibits the enzyme pyridoxal kinase, which is required for pyridoxal phosphate synthesis. So when the patient is given this anti-tubercular drug for the treatment of tuberculosis, then it inhibits the synthesis of pyridoxal phosphate as well as it inhibits the enzyme activity of this enzyme kinureninase. And that's why it precipitates vitamin B6 deficiency which leads to both xanthurenic aciduria as well as niacin deficiency or pellagra-like symptoms. And that's why uh, when this uh, drug is prescribed, isoniazide is given to patients suffering from tuberculosis along with this new, uh, isoniazide, pyridoxin is also given to the patient. The next comes why there is development of pellagra in maize eating population. Because we see that in the maize eating population are uh, pellagra like symptoms or pellagra is more common because the maize lacks the amino acid tryptophan. So if the people who are eating the maize, there is deficiency of tryptophan and that's why there will be deficiency of niacin because half of the body's requirement of niacin, they are dependent on this tryptophan. And that's why in the maize eating population which lacks tryptophan, there will be niacin deficiency and this niacin deficiency will lead to pellagra. Now let's understand the second pathway of tryptophan metabolism uh, which is for synthesis of serotonin and melatonin. So the first step of this pathway is conversion of tryptophan to 5-hydroxytryptophan. It is the hydroxylation of tryptophan by the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase. In this pathway, tetrahydrobiopterin and NADPH is required. This is the hydroxylation reaction. And later this 5-hydroxytryptophan through the decarboxylation reaction, which is pyridoxal phosphate dependent reaction, this 5-hydroxytryptophan is converted into 5-hydroxytryptamine, which is also called as serotonin and serotonin is a neurotransmitter. So that's how serotonin is synthesized from tryptophan. Later, this serotonin by the action of enzyme acetyltransferase, which is also pyridoxal phosphate dependent, and acetyl serotonin is formed. And through series of reaction, there is formation of N-acetyl-5-methoxytryptamine, which is called as melatonin. And this melatonin is a hormone. So that's how from serotonin, melatonin is synthesized. C 
Serotonin is metabolized by the action of enzyme monoamine oxidase, which is called as MAO, and then this serotonin is converted into 5-hydroxyindol acetic acid, which is excreted in the urine. And why these MAO inhibitors are prescribed in as antidepressant? Because they cause mood ele elevation. This MAO, that is monoamine oxidase, converts serotonin into 5-hydroxyindol acetic acid and thus it decreases the level of serotonin. But if these inhibitors are given to the patient, then serotonin cannot be converted into 5-hydroxyindol acetic acid. And this serotonin is responsible for mood elevation and that's why MAO inhibitors, they are prescribed as antidepressants. Degradation of tryptophan leads to formation of indole acetate. This tryptophan can be decarboxylated to form trypto, tryptamine and which is further acted upon by monoamine oxidase to form indole acetate. Likewise, uh, with the help of release of ammonia, there can be formation of indole 3 pyruvate and further this three, indole 3 pyruvate can be converted to indole acetate and finally, this indole acetate which is the excretory product of this tryptophan metabolism is excreted in the urine. What are the various functions of serotonin? Serotonin is the important neurotransmitter in the brain. It influences behavior pattern and it produces feeling of elation. It is the potent vasoconstrictor. It causes smooth muscle contraction of arterioles, bronchioles. It is also called as happiness hormone and it causes peristalsis and release of peptide hormones from GI tract. It regulates the prolactin secretion and it also regulates blood pressure as well as body temperature. And serotonin is a sleep inducer. Why it is said that carbohydrates induce sleep while protein rich foods will cause alertness? Because when we consume carbohydrates rich diet, there is secretion of insulin and it leads to decrease proteins in the blood and then the tryptophan can easily enter the blood brain barrier because there is no uh, traffic jam for crossing the blood brain barrier for proteins. So that's why this bulkiest amino acid tryptophan can easily cross blood brain barrier and it enters the brain and there will be formation of serotonin from the tryptophan and serotonin is sleep inducer and that's why when we consume carbohydrate diet then it leads to sleep. While when we consume protein rich food, there will be abundance of various amino acids in the blood and there will be traffic jam for entering or crossing the blood brain barrier and the bulkiest amino acid tryptophan cannot cross that blood brain barrier and that's why there will be less formation of serotonin and it cannot induce sleep and that's why protein rich food cause alertness while carbohydrates will induce sleep. What are the various functions of melatonin? It is the hormone which is produced by pineal gland. It is produced from tryptophan through serotonin and it is mostly synthesized at night and it is involved with the circadian rhythms or diurnal variations of the body. It regulates sleep and wakefulness. It inhibits secretion of melanocyte stimulating hormone that is MSH. It also inhibits secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone that is ACTH. It, is, it acts as a neurotransmitter also because it inhibits synthesis of dopamine and GABA in the brain and it has inhibitory effect on the functions of ovaries. There are two important abnormalities associated with tryptophan metabolism. One is carcinoid tumor or carcinoid syndrome and other is heart nerve disease. What is this carcinoid tumor? The enterochromaffin cells, these are present in the various organs like bronchial tree, biliary tract, gallbladder, pancreatic duct and gastrointestinal tract. In the gastrointestinal tract, uh, these, there are argentaffin cells. These cells are called argentaffin cells are present which are responsible for gastrointestinal tract motility. And these cells produce serotonin. So when there is localized growth of these cells, it leads to the condition called as argent taphenomas. So car carcinoid tumor is also called as argentaphenomas and it is serotonin secreting tumor. Normally what happens only 1 to 3 percent of this uh, tryptophan is diverted to serotonin production but in this condition of carcinoid tumor 
almost 60% of tryptophan is diverted to serotonin production so there will be less tryptophan available for uh, niacin formation and that's why uh, the carcinoid tumor it leads to niacin deficiency or pellagra the clinical features of carcinoid tumor or carcinoid syndrome are prominent flushing bronchial constriction diarrhea cardiac lesions or heart failure and the diagnostic tests are urinary 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid concentration so there is more than 25 mg per day or it can reach up to 500 mg per day and normally it is less than 6 mg per day and for uh, estimating the urinary 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid concentration 24 hours urine sample is required and that's why patient is asked to avoid foods rich in serotonin like banana tomato before investigation so the carcinoid tumor can be investigated by doing this diagnostic test by measuring the urinary excretion of 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid which is the excretory product of serotonin the second abnormality associated with this tryptophan metabolism is hartnup disease it is autosomal recessive disease it was first discovered in 1950 in london and there is defective transport of tryptophan and other neutral amino acids across renal tubular epithelium as well as intestinal mucosal epithelium and because of this there is excretion of these neutral amino acids in the urine for example tryptophan will be excreted in the urine and there will be tryptophan deficiency which will further leads to pellagra and the patient presents with the symptoms of pellagra like dermatitis diarrhea dementia and eventually death can occur these are the four d's of pellagra 